Hey guys! Sopion is probably the most monstrous development of the Soviet defense industry. We're talking about the self-propelled artillery cannon of incredible caliber, 203 millimeters, capable of delivering a tactical nuclear strike. It is currently the most powerful howitzer in both the Ukrainian and the Russian armies. There's an opinion that this 46-ton self-propelled artillery got named after the flower peon, peony from Russia, because of how beautiful the projectile launch looks, if one can even say so about this death machine. Today, we're going to talk about the creation of this equipment and its use, as well as try to understand how incredible its design is. At the time of the annexation of Crimea and the start of the hostilities in the Donbas region, this self-propelled artillery was no longer in service with the armed forces of Ukraine. It took an incredible effort, but in August through September 2014, a certain number of these guns were put into operation. And in the fall of 2014, three of these guns were already sent to the Donetsk region. It was done in the strictest secrecy. Only three people in the high command knew about the tasks of the artillerymen and the location of their positions. It was the Peon cannon that was fired at the partially destroyed old terminal of the Donetsk airport on the night of December 4, 2014, destroying a lot of enemy manpower and finally completely destroying the building, after which the invaders were forced to leave the terminal. The equipment was adopted by the Soviet Army in 1975. It was designed to destroy concrete, reinforced concrete, and earthen fortifications, enemy long-range artillery, tactical missile equipment, and other means of delivering nuclear charges. By the beginning of the 70s, it had already become clear that there would be no all-out nuclear war, since there simply wouldn't be a winner in it. And, if any nuclear weapons were ever used, they would be tactical nuclear charges, which the USSR simply didn't have the means to deliver. However, the Israelis have successfully used the American 175mm M107 self-propelled guns during the 1967 war. These monsters easily shot at the Syrian strategic objects at a distance of up to 32 kilometers. Thus, Pion was designed to attack the rear, to destroy especially important objects and means of nuclear attack in the tactical depth, at a distance of up to 47 kilometers. When developing the new self-propelled equipment, Soviet engineers considered a fairly large number of options, but the preferred option was the closed type with a gun in an armored wheelhouse. However, the military insisted on the open weapon variant, like the Gyatsint self-propelled guns. Since the 1950s, the USSR had seriously lagged behind the USA in terms of the heavy self-propelled artillery equipment. The development of the Peon self-propelled artillery cannon began in 1967 with the aim to catch up with the USA. There was a choice of which gun to install on the track system, but problems with large weapons of domestic production forced the country's leadership to go down the tried and tested path to use foreign experience. The Czechoslovak company Skoda had a wealth of experience in creating artillery of this class since the First World War. So, an agreement was concluded with this company for the supply of prototypes of the 210mm BR-17 gun, although they later decided to switch to the 203mm caliber. It is worth noting that the B-4 was a really powerful weapon during the 30s, but it started losing to German counterparts during the Second World War. SPA 2S7 Peon had a length of 13.2 meters and was made turretless. The gun was placed on a track chassis in the rear. The control compartment was located in the front, followed by the engine transmission compartment, followed by the calculation compartment and the combat compartment. The self-propelled artillery system was serviced by 14 people, seven of which were the crew. The crew was located in the control and calculation compartments, and the remaining seven people were located in a special armored personnel carrier or truck. A powerful 203mm cannon was mounted in the back part of the tracked chassis. The decision not to use the muzzle brake 
made it possible to reduce the pressure wave on the crew workplaces, which made it possible to avoid installing special protection for the crew members. The 203mm gun was equipped with a push-pull piston breech. The breech opened and closed automatically using a special mechanical drive, while it was also possible to perform this operation manually. The supply and subsequent delivery of the projectile were carried out using a loading mechanism that could work at any angle of vertical and horizontal guidance. It is worth saying that the gun barrel weighing 14.6 tons and 11 meters long wasn't monoblock, but was collapsible. So the gun didn't need to be sent back to the factory to be serviced, since it was possible to only change the bushing, and that was quite doable, even in field workshops. The engineers had to put in a lot of effort to compensate for the recoil resistance force that occurred during the shot. 135,000 kgf. Thus, the guides were mounted at the back to be placed on the ground before opening fire to provide additional support. The self-propelled system also used a coulter shaped like a bulldozer blade for that same purpose. It was attached at the back of the system and was driven by hydraulic jacks. The armored body of the peon had an unusual shape. The cabin was extended far forward and served as an additional counterweight to the heavy gun mount. The chassis was a modernized version of the T-80 tank chassis. The ammunition consisted of 40 rounds of separate loading ammunition. However, only four of them were stored in the back part of the self-propelled system and constituted an emergency reserve, while the rest were brought by road and laid out on the ground. The Peon ammunition weighed 100 to 130 kilograms, had a caliber of 203 millimeters, and was capable of destroying any fortification. The main ammunition of this powerful artillery was high-explosive fragmentation shells, as well as an active rocket shell that weighed 103 kilograms. It contained 13.8 kilograms of explosives. The firing range of this ammunition was a record for its time, 47.5 kilometers. Of course, the shot wasn't exactly accurate at this range. In addition to the above-mentioned shells, Peon could use a concrete piercing shell and a 2 kiloton special ammunition with a nuclear charge. The latter are no longer in service with the Ukrainian army. They were destroyed under the disarmament agreement. To feed shots from the ground, the calculation used a two-wheeled cart on which shells and charges were placed on a removable stretcher. The rate of fire of this equipment was up to one and a half shots per minute. Additional armament of the self-propelled guns consisted of a handheld anti-tank grenade launcher and a portable anti-aircraft missile system. The production of 2S7 self-propelled artillery was carried out for 10 years, from 1975 to 1985. It entered service with individual self-propelled artillery battalions of high-capacity artillery brigades of the Reserve of the Supreme High Command of the Ground Forces of the USSR. The battalion usually consisted of three artillery batteries of four guns. In the 1980s, the 2S7 self-propelled systems needed to be modernized. Thus, development work was started under the codename Malka. The upgraded version of the self-propelled guns called 2S7M Malka, was designed at Design Bureau No. 3 of the Kirov plant. Stronger materials and rubberized elements were used in the chassis of the modernized self-propelled guns. New fire control equipment was installed, which was capable of receiving data in automatic mode. The remote loading mechanism was improved, the design of the charging stacks was changed, and new ammunition of greater power was introduced. The ammunition carried by the self-propelled guns was increased from 4 to 8 rounds. The 2S7M was equipped with a system of regulated control of continuous action, with automatic systems for diagnosing the state of the most important subsystems of the self-propelled artillery. Modernization of the Peon chassis made it possible to increase its resource to up to 10,000 kilometers. Specialists see room for improvement of this combat vehicle in the development of high-precision guided or homing projectiles for it. Peon has never been used in combat during the entire existence of the USSR. But, after its collapse and to this day, 
This self-propelled system, although seemingly outdated, has shown that when used properly, it can still solve certain problems. It is generally accepted that the Peon self-propelled system was first used in combat by the Georgian army in their fight against Russian troops in 2008. But unfortunately, all six available self-propelled guns were lost during the retreat. Later, Peon was involved in the conflict of Nagorno-Karabakh. After the collapse of the USSR, it turned out that of all the former Soviet republics except Russia, Ukraine had the second largest number of these self-propelled guns, about 100 items, according to Wikipedia. In 2014, Ukraine started taking peons out of storage. Their time had come. It's unknown exactly how many of these self-propelled guns are currently fighting on the side of the armed forces of Ukraine, but unfortunately for the occupiers, there are quite a few of them. It was after recommissioning the peons in Ukraine that the 43rd Separate Artillery Brigade, named after Taras Triasila, was created. They have been defending the country since 2014, and after the Russian invasion in 2022, they proved to be very useful in the battles for Kyiv. Sometime later, they were used in the Kharkiv counteroffensive, and now they are concentrated in the Donbas region. Well, that's all for today. Hit the like button if you learned something new, and let me know what you learned in the comments. See you next time.